Hello, everybody. It's time for Children's Church. Thank you so much for joining us today at Broadway. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to come and to worship you and to learn about you. Help us today, Lord, to focus on loving each other. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, today is a special kind of Sunday. Does anybody know what it's called? It's called Palm Sunday. And during our time together today, you'll find out why it's called that. But right now, it's time for our Bible verse. Mr. Muck, will you put it on the screen, please? The words say, love each other as I have loved you. And that comes from John 15, 12. Now, I know that you are experts at this by now. So let's stand up and let's just say our verse. Here we go. Love each other as I have loved you. John 15, 12. Okay, let's do that again. And let's really mean it this time. Here we go. Love each other as I have loved you. John 15, 12. Good job. Okay, it's time for Ollie now and a song. So you stand up and get ready to participate. I'll see you in a few minutes. is helping me I can do the things that he does I can love like Jesus I believe his light can shine through me I can do the things that he does I can love like Jesus
Hi, I'm Lucy, and my friends and I love cars so much that we decide to have our own car parade. I have to finish my car before we start. Hmm, what color do you think I should paint it? On the count of three, shout out your favorite color. One, two, three. Wow, those are all amazing choices. There's only one thing left to do. I love it. I'm so glad you guys helped me choose. Now, what else does this car need? Oh, I know, streamers. Coming through. Beep, beep. Ding. Uh oh, I forgot to put something on the license plate. Who? Who? <gasps> it's Ollie. Hello, Lucy. Who? Who? You're quite a colorful car, aren't you? Hi, Ollie. I'm decorating this car for our special parade. What a fun idea. Who? Who? I know of another special celebration, too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through who? Ollie's got a Bible story for me and you. Hola, friends. I'm Luis the Handyman. So happy to see you today. It's a very special day because it's... Home Sunday! <laughs> and we're going to celebrate Jesus. Do you want to help me build the story? Ha <laughs> ha, great! Let's put it on the story fence. Hammers up, little builders. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, hammer! Great job, little helpers. You can put your hammers down. Now we just need our story tools. Yep, we have everything we need. Today's true story from the Bible is all about Palm Sunday. <laughs> it started in Jerusalem when people found out that Jesus was on his way to their town. Oh, they were so excited. They had heard that Jesus could do amazing things and they wanted to see him. The people wanted to show that Jesus is special. So they got their coats and their palm branches. They spread their coats on the road and waved their palm branches in the air. Would you like to wave palm branches too? Great! If you don't have one, you can pretend like me. Now, when Jesus comes, we're going to wave our palm branches in the air like this. Woo! <laughs> Let's try it. Ready? Good job. Now, when you see Jesus, wave your palm branch and shout with me, Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Let's practice, ready? Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Great job, now you're ready. You can put your palm branches down. <gasps> Look, there he is, it's Jesus, ready? Wave your branches. Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus! Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus! Let's say it louder! Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus! <laughs> Great job, everyone! Palm Sunday is a special day where we celebrate Jesus. But you don't have to have a palm branch to celebrate Jesus. We can sing to Jesus. We can dance. We can pray. We can yell, yay, Jesus, every day. <laughs> the best thing we can do to celebrate Jesus is to love like Jesus. So start your engines and let's go, go, go and love like Jesus. Hey there, Ali, tell me, who can love like Jesus? I can love like Jesus. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. 
Tell me, who can love like Jesus? I can love like Jesus. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Adios! Whew. So there's your story, and it's all true. When you love like Jesus, you are celebrating him too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, I love how people celebrated Jesus in this story, and we can celebrate Jesus too by loving like him. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! I just need to finish. Hmm, what should I write here? Oh, I know. I'm going to write, yay, Jesus, on the license plate. That'll be perfect for a parade. I'll see you next time. Bye! as I have loved you, John 15, 12. Love each other as I have loved you, John 15, 12. Sunday, people celebrated the great things Jesus had done, like raising Lazarus from the dead. And they welcomed him to town by waving palm branches and throwing their coats on the ground for him to travel over. They shouted in excitement as he passed by. I have a little guessing game for everyone. If you can read, it will help. If you can't, your parents can help you with it. Mr. Monk is going to put up some words that have all the letters scrambled which means they, the letters are not in the correct order. If you unscramble them correctly, you're going to end up with a word that people use to show Jesus how much they love him or appreciate something he has done. Okay, let's look at these words together. See the first one's got all those letters mixed up? If you think you already know what it is, shout it out. All right, if you don't, I'm going to give you a little hint. Here's the first clue. People shouted this when Jesus walked by. Okay? Shout again if you know what it is. You know, Mr. Monk? What do you think it is? Hosanna. Hosanna. Everybody say, Hosanna. Good job. The second word, now it's shorter. It's got those letters mixed up. If you already know what it is, go ahead and say it. All right. Some of you, if you're still waiting to figure it out, here's a clue. What we do to show God how much we love him, we blank him. Know what it is, Mr. Monk? Okay, we praise him. Yes, fantastic. All right, now this third one up there, it's got lots of letters all mixed up. And this is a word people say when God does something amazing. It begins with the letter H. If you know what it is, on three, shout it out. One, two, three. Hallelujah! That was it. Exactly right. Okay, this fourth one may be a little bit harder. If you've got a guess already, go ahead and say it. If you don't, here is a clue. This is a word used to describe how great God is. Do you have a guess, Mr. Monk? Amazing? That is an awesome guess, but it's not exactly right. Hmm, let's try it again. Let me tell you the real word, everybody. Drum roll, please. It is... Awesome, and that's exactly what God is. 
He is awesome, and we need to always praise him. Okay, it's time for another song, and then we'll have another story that tells us more about Palm Sunday. I'll see you after that. My name is Graham, and you'll never believe it, I graduated from baking class! <laughs> it was an intense two and a half week course, but I made it to the end. And to celebrate, I made a cake! Okay, I know it may not look like much now, but when I add the frosting, it's going to look amazing. Of course I'm not gonna frost it yet. Because the cake is still warm. That's something I learned in class. If you try and frost a cake while it's still warm, everything falls apart. So, you gotta let it, you know, chill. Oh, hey! While we wait, let's talk about patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. So, let's wait. Still warm. Yeah, waiting is boring. I know something that might help. Let's set a timer. Uh, I figure it'll take half an hour for the cake to cool, so. Yeah. Okay, how much time has passed? 30 seconds? Oh! Oh! 
Waiting is so hard. I just want to finish this cake so I can celebrate. Today's story has a big celebration in it. And the people celebrating have been waiting for a long time. <laughs> you should check it out. I'll count the seconds. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, Chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. For hundreds of years, God's people had been waiting on a savior for rescue. Every year at Passover, they celebrated how God had freed them from slavery in Egypt, and they looked forward to how one day God would rescue them again. Lord, save us. The city of Jerusalem was filled to overflowing for Passover, and news of anything unusual spread quick as flame. They say Jesus is coming into the city. That teacher fella? He made somebody alive again, even though they were dead. Lazarus? Well, if you believe that sort of thing. My cousin Sarah saw it with her own eyes. Excitement and tensions ran high in the city, and as the people prepared to celebrate, the religious leaders hatched their own plans. This Jesus is trouble. He says too much. He does too much. Then we'll have to do something about that, won't we? A short distance away near the town of Bethany, Jesus was indeed preparing to make his way to Jerusalem. He called two of his disciples, maybe Peter and John. Go into the village. As soon as you get there, you will find a donkey tied up. Her colt will be with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Consider it done. But wait, we can't just take someone's donkey. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. The owner will send them right away. Oh, uh, okay, good. The two disciples hurried into the village. Jesus didn't say where to look, so, uh, oh. Steady there. The two disciples quickly untied the donkey and her colt. Hey! Uh, hello? What are you doing? Why are you untying my donkeys? Uh, it's like this. The Lord needs them. Oh, okay then. The disciples led the colt and its mother back to Jesus. They even draped their coats on the backs of the donkeys. There, nice and comfy. Sort of. So Jesus climbed onto the back of the colt and his friends followed close behind as they started on their way down the dusty road towards the city. Though his friends didn't realize it till later, Jesus was fulfilling the words of the prophet Zechariah from hundreds of years before. Say to the city of Zion, see your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. The road was crowded with travelers making their way to Jerusalem. Other people spilled out of the city when they heard that Jesus was on the way. Praise God. Have you heard what this man has done? People actually began to take off their coats and throw them on the road before Jesus. They tore palm branches from the trees and waved them on high. Some of the religious leaders had joined the crowd to discover what was going on. This whole thing is preposterous. Out of control. So tell him to stop. Who, oh, me? Hosanna! Teacher, teacher. As the donkey carried him slowly forward, Jesus turned to look at the religious leaders. They glared back. Teacher, tell your followers to stop this instant. Jesus took in the joyful crowds. He looked ahead at the walled city of Jerusalem, sprouting up from the rocky hillsides. Then he looked back at the religious leaders. I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As Jesus rode on, the religious leaders fell back, grumbling to each other. This isn't getting us anywhere. Look how the whole world is following him. So even though these religious leaders had studied and waited their whole lives for a savior, they didn't recognize Jesus when he came. But still, the people continued to cheer and to follow Jesus into the city.
Listen up. Here's the truth. Waiting is boring. And it's so hard and it can take a long time. It can even feel like time slows down when you're waiting. But listen, just because we're so focused on what we're waiting for doesn't mean that God isn't up to something. So I say we change our focus. Instead of thinking about how long things are taking to go the way we want, let's focus on the creator of the universe. Let's focus on how he has a plan. Let's focus on how the savior that the Israelites waited hundreds of years for has already come for us, and his name is Jesus. We should focus on those things. Everything else is just icing on the cake. Waiting can take a long time. It's true, but it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be boring. We've got a lot to celebrate while we wait. That's the one thing to remember today. You can celebrate even when you're waiting. Who knows? Maybe waiting can be fun. Oh, the cake is ready for some frosting. Oh, I can't wait to taste this. I don't have to. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. Thank you again for joining us for our Palm Sunday celebration. And I hope that you'll join us again next week for Easter. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your precious gift of your Son and for the sacrifice that he made for us. Help us to learn to love one another like you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've got to have a joke for you before you leave, and this one's an Easter joke. What do you call an Easter bunny with fleas? Mr. Monk, you know? He knows. It's Bugs Bunny. See you next week. Bye-bye.